Okay, welcome guys, uh, Andrew Dwight here. Look, I'm going to go through some tips and tricks and probably, you know, this is good for uh, beginners and advanced users. Essentially with Pluspec, uh, we create walls from scratch. So uh, we've set out a lot of things out so you can quickly go through and change, uh, you know, the type of brick, uh, the step downs, which is basically from here to here and the cavity and the whole lot. However, you might have a favorite wall type or a particular structure construction method that you use over and over. And it's very handy not to have to do this. I'm going to show you a couple of, uh, of tips and tricks here that are going to help you out. Okay, so we're going to assume that these two wall types here are standard wall types that uh, you might use over and over. So it might be a particular drop down to Sudanese or a particular slab step down. And these, you know, take probably less than 30 seconds to actually create. However, if you're using it over and over and you don't want to remember what type of brick, what cavity size, what drop down size and everything like that, it's possible to save them to your component browser. So these here's two that I've done before and I'm just going to quickly go and open up another uh, SketchUp model and I'm going to show you how we would get these. So we've got a blank SketchUp model and I'm not going to touch any Pluspec tools, however I'm going to get the parametric power of Pluspec uh, via using SketchUp. So over here you'll have your components browser. If you don't have uh, this uh, set up you can go up to uh, window, default tray and you can have your tray on and sometimes you might find that you've clicked this one up here and it'll hide the tray. Can you see that? Okay, So if you click it it'll pin the tray. Alright so what I want to do is go to components Okay, and because the last thing I opened was this however you'll probably find that your components will probably look like this. Okay, so those two walls that I showed you before, uh, I want to access them from my components just to make things a little bit quicker for me. So I'm just going to go to here and I'm going to go down to Pluspec Wall Assemblies Parametric. And in a moment I'm going to show you how to use these. I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to put it over here. Okay, and I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to put it here. You notice that it already has uh, the, the set downs and everything save for me. However, what I did is I created a component, I'll show you that in a moment. What I can do is I can just select all of them, control A, and explode them, and I can now right click one of the walls, there's one, and I can go to my walls menu in Pluspec and create similar wall, which essentially is going to open the dialog, but it's going to keep all the settings in there. So if I go and start it to draw, I can actually use uh, that particular wall type. Right, with the same step down and everything and it's really handy. Uh, they're all parametric and essentially I now have a set of favorites saved and you can do this in many ways. Now I'm going to go back to that other model and I'm going to show you how I did that. So I'm going to go to Pluspec uh, and I'm going to choose a wall type so in this particular version I might use a uh, just say a clad wall, external cladding with plasterboard interior and I might say that I want it to be 2440 obviously if you are using the imperial version, you'll put it in feet and inches, uh, and the top of my window heights. I can set everything, so be careful to go through and get this right. So my spacing and my blocking and stud spacings, if you're an architect, go maximum stud spacing, let the builders deal with that. Uh, you know, whether you're going to, if you're in America, you might have double headers in your walls. Uh, and if you go through carefully and select everything that you want to do, or, or you want to save in a default wall type, you know, your installation values. Uh, if you want to go through and do all this very, very carefully, it'll be very handy for you later on. And I'm going to do my manual override. So I might say with a clad wall, I might just want a, a 50 millimeter step down or two inch step down uh, on the outside of my cladding uh, and go submit. And I'm going to quickly just draw this wall. Okay, so what it did, it gave me my 50 millimeter step down. Uh, it's put uh, my cladding and my internal lining on and everything there for me. Okay, and it's also created my layers and everything. But I want to use this over and over. I never want to have to go through those processes again. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to just quickly put some dimensions on so that when I'm dragging and dropping it into my components I have, okay, well I know it's a 50 mil step down. So what I do is I select that and the dimension and I right click make component. And I'll write in what it is. It's a 2440 uh, clad wall uh, with uh, 50 millimeters step down. Okay, create. Okay, and you'll notice over in my components here that I actually got it. So if you want to find this, click in model 
and you'll find all the components. Now you'll see that there's components and soda components but I'm only interested in the wall. If I right click this component and I go save as I can save it to a component directory or I can create my own. So if I went to components and said well I want it in my bathroom accessories or so on uh, I can, I've got plus spec wall assemblies here but you can create your own so I can go right click new and you might say I don't know retaining walls okay but this is an assembly uh, so I'm going to go into here and I go save and now every time I open SketchUp I'll open another version of SketchUp right now and I'll have access to that straight away and it's a big time saver especially when you're using things over and over okay you'll notice here it is Thing, drop it into here. The most important thing is to remember that you need to explode that wall. So right click, uh, explode, right, right click, walls, uh, create similar wall, and now you're ready to go ahead and draw. Without getting too carried away. You could also create a wall in a loop like that and you could have this as a as a loop wall because you might always do the same size drawing or you might want to start with a master model. You can create a master model with your walls so you can get started straight away and then you can create your roof from your walls. And away you go basically, you, you're ready to, to run and, and I don't think there's a quicker way to do this in any program I've ever come across. Um, so guys I hope it's a, a handy tip uh, go ahead and create a whole heap uh, thanks very much to some of our users for uh, giving this tip it's, uh, it's been helpful Cheers. Uh, make any comments if you've got any questions at the bottom of the video thanks for watching, bye